Next at six, patience, perseverance, and a lot of money. That's what the president says it will take to complete victory in Iraq. Sheriff's deputies in the North County shoot and kill a man. They say he charged them with a knife. It's not the way you want to start the season. The Bolts talk about the beating in Kansas City. And breaking news, a brush fire is threatening homes in our county. The News at 6 starts right now. NBC 739 News at 6, Weekend Edition. Iraq is now the central front. Enemies of freedom are making a desperate stand there. President Bush says there is no turning back in Iraq. He ties success there to winning the war on terrorism. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Greg Mills. And I'm Catherine Garcia. First, we have some breaking news to tell you about. A brush fire has just broken out in Poway and is threatening homes. It's burning in an area off High Pine Street. Firefighters say some residents are being evacuated. They have not been able to tell us how many acres have burned. We have a crew on the way. We will bring you information as soon as we get it. This was the president's first televised speech about Iraq since he flew and landed on board the USS Lincoln in May. That's when he declared that major combat operations were over in Iraq and said the mission was accomplished. Since then, nearly 150 U.S. soldiers have died in Iraq, the death toll climbing past the number killed during major combat. There were mixed views from the people we spoke to about his speech tonight. I think we... ...individuals. As for Bush's approval rating, recent polls suggest just over half of the public approves of his job performance. This comes after months where his job approval was in the 60s and 70s. Here at home, San Diego County Sheriff's deputies fatally shoot a Vista man after he allegedly charges them with a knife. It happened on the 100 block of West Indian Rock Road in Vista shortly after 8 this morning. At first I thought, well... The victim has not been identified. No one else was hurt. No one was in the man's house when the shooting happened. The three deputies involved will be placed on administrative duty pending the outcome of the investigation. Lieutenant Governor Cruz Bustamante says he is donating nearly $4 million in contributions from unions and Native American tribes to the No on Proposition 54 campaign. Originally, he was going to use a finance loophole to put the money toward last year's run for Lieutenant Governor. Critics said it was wrong and even sued. Now he says it will go to fight Proposition 54, a ballot measure which limits the collection of most race-based data. Prop 54's biggest supporter finds that huge donation unfair, to say the least. I think if it's illegal for him, that too is illegal. A Bustamani aide says the candidate wants to avoid a political fight over the donations. Israeli helicopters were on attack in Gaza tonight. They fired two missiles at the home of a Hamas militant. Eleven people were wounded. There's no word yet on whether anyone was killed. It's unclear if the Israelis hit the person they were after. Israel has carried out a series of strikes on Hamas members the last few weeks. An unattended suitcase led to a road closure right outside street scene this afternoon. Officers wanted to make sure it was not some kind of dangerous device that someone left. As a precaution, they shut a section of market and closed one of the gates into the event. It turned out to be nothing. Three-day party started again at 2 this afternoon. As it's been for the last few years, Sunday is open to all ages. And for some, that means families. It's all about the kids. It's about the music. It's about culture. It's about exposing everybody to everything. <laughs> Street scene ends at 9 o'clock tonight. Denver at home it'd be a different story. Those folks have a lot of faith in their team. <laughs> That's you. good to see. It's only week number one. That's what I like. I tell you. All right. And those poor Chargers, the schedule maker, not kind to them at all. I mean, early on. KC well, and then Denver? Early on. But yeah. last year they played an easy schedule to start, and then it got tougher. So we'll yeah. see. It's okay. only one week. Yeah, mm -hmm. just keep yes. that in mind. No more. And a man we think is very bright and also hardworking, Joe Lazura, is up next with uh, your Sunday forecast. A big super lotto jackpot will be up for grabs Wednesday because nobody matched all the winning numbers in last night's drawing. Here they are in case you nailed one of the smaller prizes like some people we know. 16, 20, 28, 31, 41 with mega number 19. The jackpot, 46 million bucks. For Wednesday, it's expected to be $57 million. Not just that he only had one I hate one to correct number. you, but I, that, it wasn't the mega number, so I didn't even win anything. Nothing. Oh, okay. Nothing. Let me take back my, what I just said. My $2, <laughs> and normally I just do one. It has to be $40 million or more for me to even get involved, usually. Oh, yeah, you know, of course. I don't want the small well, change. Right. 10, 20, 30 of million. That's not. just not, that's not worth my while. But, I do. I do. Well, okay. 40. <laughs> Your local news is next.
Coming up, terrifying moments for homeowners. A brush fire threatens a neighborhood in the North County. Deputies open fire, killing a man who allegedly ran at them with a knife. U.S. troops arrest a man suspected of masterminding a deadly bombing as President Bush calls on the nation to support the continued fight against Iraq. The news at 11 is coming up next. NBC 739 News at 11, Weekend Edition. It will take time and require sacrifice. Yet we will do what is necessary. We will spend what is necessary to achieve this essential victory in the war on terror. The president addresses the nation, telling Americans there is no turning back in Iraq. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Greg Mills. And I'm Kathy. U.S. is still working to bring stability to Afghanistan. Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld is touring the country. He made a visit to a city in the eastern region where 80 American troops are stationed. They've been fighting Taliban guerrillas and helping with reconstruction projects in the area. Four Americans have died in combat there in the last month. Rumsfeld said there are still concerns about security at Afghanistan's borders and terrorists slipping into that country. Lots of controversy about the almost $4 million Cruz Bustamante received from unions and Native American tribes. Bustamante had planned to use a financial loophole to put that money toward last year's run for lieutenant governor. Critics said it was wrong and threatened to sue, so Bustamante is giving that money to help fight Proposition 54. That's a ballot measure limiting the collection of most race-based data. Prop 54's biggest supporter doesn't think much of Bustamante's generous gift to the opposition. I think if it's illegal for him to take... An aide says Bustamante wants to avoid a battle over the donation. Meanwhile, a presidential contender announced he would not be running for U.S. Senate. North Carolina Senator John Edwards says he will focus his efforts on winning the Democratic presidential nomination. According to a state party official, the Democratic Party chairperson received a letter from Edwards today announcing his decision. Edwards is expected to formally announce his candidacy next week. A brush fire threatened homes in Poway today and burns 15 acres. The fire was spotted late this afternoon. There are no injuries. Poway Fire Chief says firefighters will be on the scene all night long, be mopping up and looking for hot spots. They don't know what caused the fire. Cooler temperatures are helping firefighters slow a brush fire in East Los Angeles. But the potential for danger has hundreds of people near Highland spending yet another night away from home. The evacuation remaining in effect likely through tomorrow. The fire in the San Bernardino National Forest has burned more than 1,300 acres. Firefighters estimate it is about 30 percent contained. Israeli helicopters were on the attack in Gaza tonight. They fired two missiles at the home of a Hamas militant. Eleven people were wounded. There was no word yet on whether anyone was killed. It's unclear if the Israelis hit the person they were after. Israel has carried out a series of strikes on Hamas members the last few weeks. Yasser Arafat says he wants the Palestinian parliament speaker to become the new prime minister. Ahmad Kuria is the choice. He's also known as Abu Allah. He was one of the chief architects of the Oslo Accords between Israel and the Palestinian Liberation Organization. Analysts say he's a moderate. He'll most likely be accepted by both Israel and the U.S. The move comes a day after Mahmoud Abbas stepped down. U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell says any Palestinian prime minister must crack down on militant groups. Thursday is, of course, the anniversary of the September 11th attacks. Memorials around the country are already getting underway. A memorial walk in Dallas today featured 3,000 flags, each flag representing one confirmed victim of the terrorist attacks. The participants also walked 3,000 meters. Money raised from the event benefits Texas firefighters. A totem pole carved by Native Americans in Washington State was presented to the city of Shanksville, Pennsylvania today. It honors those who died on board Flight 93. A similar pole sits in New York's Sterling Forest to honor the World Trade Center victims. The Lumi tribe also plans to deliver two totems and an arch to the Pentagon. Organizers of Street Scene say some roads in the East Village will be closed until mid-afternoon tomorrow. Well, congratulations to all of those athletes who gave it a try. I know if someone told me one mile or three mile. Oh, man, that's not a <laughs> choice. Pretty easy I went for a walk today. <laughs> one mile or three mile? Back around the block. One block. Time <laughs> the charger. I think that is pure class. Our triple threat play of the week. Mm -hmm. Hats off to Tom Kraft's team. They did a terrific job. And that quarterback whose name I can't pronounce. Matt Dugalecki. Boy, boy, he was good. Played, played well under pressure. He sure you're did. right. That was a classy way to end it all. You're right. It was. Hey, George Michael's Sports Machine, coming up next. Have a good night.
Hi, Catherine. You know, these Marines thought they were coming home in June, but it didn't happen. Now, three months later, they're finally back home in Camp Pendleton tonight. Happy. Happy day. Exciting. They waited eight months for their favorite Marine to return home. Now, they have to endure one more long afternoon waiting. First it was 4.30, then 5, now 5.45. Jessica Arroyo can't wait for her husband Robert to meet his five-month-old son. He's seen pictures of Robbie, but only through the internet. The Broadwaters drove nonstop 27 hours to get here from Kilgore, Texas. This was a hectic week. <laughs> I mean, from Tuesday till now, you know, it's like, oh, they're really coming home. <laughs> 6 p.m., the Marines from the 1st Battalion, 4th Regiment, march in. These Marines battled their way to Baghdad. More battles in Saddam City. They lost four of their fellow Marines in Iraq. I knew I was going to come home. I wasn't going to let nothing stop me from seeing my son. Robert meets Robert Jr. Hey. Philip gets reacquainted with mom and dad. I'm happy he's home. Hey, Pop. How are you? The Broadwaters are heading back home to Texas via Colorado so they can see the boss, Bruce Springsteen. Then Philip Broadwater plans to have no plans when he gets back to Texas. Try to relax, try to take it easy for a little while. And the rest of this battalion returns home in waves throughout the weekend. Reporting live from Camp Pendleton, Greg Mills. Catherine, back to you. All right. Well, the second weekend in a row, police are out in full force in the college area looking for people who party too hardy. Do you think it's warranted? Um, I, I really don't think it is. The numbers say it is warranted. Last weekend's crackdown in the college area resulted in 90 misdemeanor arrests, 180 traffic tickets, including 14 DUIs. I think drinking and driving is a big problem down here. There's a lot of parties going on, a lot of people are driving about that are coming from or going to parties and they've already been drinking. Police found they spent way too much time breaking up out of control parties. So starting last year and continuing this year, they're really cracking down. No more do we just go and knock on the door and uh, we'd like to do that and if it was effective we would, but it just isn't. We don't have the resources to return to the same place four or five times. Police target the party host now and it's really paying off. We found in fact that we did not have a single return call to one of the residences where we've employed this protocol. So it was uh, a big success in that regard. Out of control parties can impact the entire neighborhood. Loud music, inappropriate public behavior, folks in the college area have seen it all. They're happy to see police clamping down. Good. I support it 100%. I have even called to thank them. That one woman who has lived in the college area for 40 years told me, hey, the kids today are better behaved than they were back in the 70s and 80s. As for the uh, toll tonight, 18 misdemeanor arrests so far tonight here in the college area. Reporting live, Greg Mills, Susan and Marty, back to you. 17 flights impacted here at Lindbergh Field. Two were canceled and 15 delayed. Now, the last flight in from New York will be arriving shortly after midnight tonight, about two and a half hours past its normal arrival. Flights to and from Detroit, Newark, and New York are pretty much impacted today. Passengers arriving around 8.30 tonight. You see them right there from Newark. They couldn't believe what they saw at the Newark airport when they checked in today, shortly after the blackout hit the East Coast. Alarms were going off, like no air conditioning and all of that good stuff. A tough day. They're very happy to be here in San Diego tonight. Now, all the East Coast airports are up and running. However, San Diego airport officials caution you to check with your airline tomorrow regarding departures and arrivals here in San Diego. Reporting live from Lindbergh Field, Greg Mills. Marty, back to you. All right. Next at 6.